Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land. Please, the Binding of Isaac Atrith Plus. You know, I, I think I have diagnosed an issue that's been plaguing me for a while. Sometimes I, I have days where I record, and by the end of the day, my voice is just so sore. And I'm like, what is wrong? I must have not gotten good sleep, or did I not drink enough water or something? GDM2 Cialis, okay. It's gonna be one of those days. Um, I realized, here's how stupid I am, but I think this is a mistake that it, uh, people are gonna find relatable, okay? I think what I've realized is those days are days where I have the volume on the computer up too high. And I'm talking as if I have to talk over the game, which doesn't make logical sense. Because of the fact that, you know, the balance is the same. It's just whether or not you're actually cranking the volume knob, not actually adjusting anything within the, you know, sound device itself. So I think subconsciously, I think that's that's what's been happening. Is if I have the, the volume up a little too high, in Isaac specifically, because that's a lot of uninterrupted talking, I feel like I have to yell. And then after like six hours of that, I'm like, dude... Why is my throat so so sore? I don't know. I must be sick. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. That's my hypothesis. It's it's a not a smart brain we got. It's always trying to make shorthands find patterns where they don't exist. Is missing obvious stimuluses and etc. etc. What can I say? You know. I didn't realize I, I've been accidentally uh, simulating having drunk conversations, you know? You ever... I'm, I'm trying not to relate this to a recent 90 Day Fiance bit, but that's okay. If you have never been around drunk people, you might not find this relatable. But if you've been around drunk people, or you've been a drunk person around non-drunk people, you should be able to relate to this. Being around drunk people when you're drunk, usually pretty good time. Not stimulating conversation most of the time, but a lot of, hey, whoa, you know. It's like recognizing somebody in a foreign country wearing the memorabilia of your home hockey franchise. If you were in, you know, Tokyo, and you saw a dude wearing a Vancouver Canucks skate jersey, you'd be like, whoa. But if you are, and especially, you know, like, since I turned 30 a year ago, don't drink very much anymore. And when we're in environments where people are drinking, I've realized, oh my god, it's so annoying. It always happens the same way. People meet up, they talk at a normal volume. The more they drink, the louder one of them gets. Then they start to go just louder and louder and louder because they're trying to talk over the person that is speaking. But the person that's speaking is yelling because they were trying to talk over you and you were yelling a little bit, you know? And it just never ends. Like, a couple of weeks ago, Kate and I found ourselves uh, in an extraordinarily loud bar that we thought would be a good place for dinner. We just misjudged it. And I, I realized, like, bar owners and patrons are constantly in a struggle. I'm like, why is the music so loud? The music's so loud, everyone has to shout. I'm sure, I'm sure the person who manages the place is like, well, the music has to be loud so that you can hear it. If we don't make it loud, all the drunk people just shout over top of it. And I'm like, well, you know, that's what I get. Really, that's a situation where I just shouldn't have been there for the most part, but you don't take offense to it. It's, you know, I'd, I would not, I would explicitly, sorry, let me rephrase. I would implicitly distrust a sober person who is like, yeah, I don't drink, but hanging around drunk people rules. Have some self-respect. No, it doesn't. You could be doing such better things with your time. <laughs> you could be engaging in pleasant conversation at a reasonable volume. Um, you could be, you know, catching up on HBO's Watchmen, reading a book. As someone who's been a part of those inebriated conversations, nothing productive has really ever come of them. But at the time, it feels like you're solving the mysteries of the world. It's very annoying, I'm sure, if you're if you are not under the influence while the conversations are happening. That's what I was doing to myself. I was accidentally getting my computer drunk. 
And then I'm like, why are you shouting? And he's like, you made me. I don't know why my computer is a he, you know? Just came, just came out off the spot with that. Really should have stuck with that before, in my opinion there. But I thought we would dig a little deeper. Oh, well. We'll, we'll see what happens here. We're definitely going to get a deal with the devil. Okay, that's fine. And this is fine as well. This deal with the devil is going to change a lot. There's things like you don't, you know, sometimes it benefits you to, to talk your problems over with somebody. Because you might not have considered the lens that they're going to uh, approach you from. Like one time, as a kid, like every once in a while, work with me on this one. You know, I'd be in school and light would just dim like crazy. You know, the same way you feel if you're about to faint or something like that. Great, great dodges so far. It would be sunny, and then like a split second later, it was like somebody put the, the sun on a dimmer switch. And one day, you know, I thought this only happened to me. I was in like fourth or fifth grade. And uh, it happened, and I went to my friend. I said, yo. Maybe I didn't say yo. I probably went, holy heck. <laughs> Did you see that? It's like... Things just got dimmer. And he was like, yeah, the sun went behind a cloud. And I was like, oh, that explains it. <laughs> you know, you don't consider stuff like that. I mean, you should, but I mean, I was a child and also dumb. But even as adults were dumb, you know, you consider things from an alternate perspective. Sometimes you just, things snap into place. Like, that's why I want to, you, you ever go out like um, to a restaurant and the person you're dining with just thinks that they know how everything should work. I don't understand why they do it like this. Why do they come out and take your drink order and then they come out and take your food order? Why don't they just take your drink order and your food order simultaneously? That way they have to come to the table less often. We get our food and our drinks faster. It's a win-win. Well, you know, I feel like if you talk to the person run in the place they might hit you with a little unexpected sauce you know they might be like well sir we did try to do that in the past but turns out um sometimes when we come to the table people are not ready for their food order to be taken but everybody you know they they might be experimenting with food but they're less likely to experiment with their beverage perhaps we find that actually it increases the throughput of the restaurant and customer satisfaction when you're able to you know take the orders on uh, not simultaneously as a result people feel less overwhelmed even though they're making the same amount of decisions they feel more uh, competent to do so as a result of the fact they don't have to make too many at once you know but the nation's uncles are are all just because they work in like a you know a, a factory they're like well this is the way it should be that's what my brain is like why is my throat sore? I don't understand. Oh, I better get that checked out. Have you ever considered the fact that uh, you're just talking too loud? Hmm, no, it can't possibly be that. It doesn't make any sense. Anyway, we've been talking about this for eight and a half minutes. Let's move along. This run is very good so far. With one modest negative. DPS. HP is great. Survivability out of control. Would have been happier with Epiphora, but if I'm being honest, Epiphora is like, it's not quite an A tier item. On this squad, it would be A tier because we don't have that much amazing stuff. Obviously, Mark is an exception and, you know, even meat is pretty nice, but just in general. I don't know if that was worth it. I'm guilty of looking for the, the shortcut, the quick fix here. Oh. Hush is not very good, or hushy, but... One way or the other. I mean, it's hard to imagine a situation where we deal with the devil precedent, we don't make it through this situation. We might even be able to play that room and get something out of it. I don't know, though. Maybe if we had Perthrow. I'd open the door to Perthrow a little bit more. Now, I gotta remember, that I'm recording this on a new day. I was getting a little bit lazy last time. I remember I was making uh, plays that were a little bit, you know... They, I, was, I was making plays in the shorthand when we could have been setting up a, a beautiful future. So, let's just 
remind ourselves, hey, you know, Isaac is very much, uh, it's not even a marathon or a sprint. It's really just constantly jogging. <laughs> you just gotta keep putting one foot in front of the other. There's no real reason to go fast if it compromises your ability to win, because you're not going anywhere. You're just walking. <laughs> If you think of Isaac in a philosophical sense like that, there's no real reason to screw things up, you know? In the whole scheme of things, what's another 90 seconds on an Isaac episode to, to play the best you can? It's another point zero 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 one percent of your lifetime, you know, Isaac time sink. Doesn't make a difference. Functionally speaking, I think. So you just, you know, have a philosophical approach to it. Yeah, let's do it. Cuba meat is actually really nice. I hope that we'll beat the odds and get a deal with the devil. There's not much else keeping us on this floor right now, to be honest. Please, I screwed it up. Yo, hushy. He's so hushy. Let's go. He's a star, but he cries, cries, cries for his lonely heart thinking. If we could have some HP left over, I probably would have rather have gone for uh, the Razor. Because actually, the Razor could be pretty okay. But certainly, I definitely... Rotten Baby's not even close. You definitely want that. Book of the Dead, I also feel like, is just... It's, it's too good to pass up, honestly. Help, because if those guys blow up, they're going to cause me some problems. So I think we're in a good spot now. We got a little HP-related potential woes, but not much. Recording this on a Sunday. I had a good weekend, honestly. On Saturday, I did almost nothing, and it was beautiful. It was the first Saturday. I've, you know, I, I practiced a little bit for Champions Assault. We got a, you know, another high-octane stream coming to that on Tuesday, and... Uh, it would benefit me a great deal to have this be the week of my ascension. <laughs> yeah, we gotta be getting closer to Beelzebub here. Previous weeks, you know, uh, I don't know when this episode's coming out. Probably like a week after it's recording. Maybe a little bit more than that. The first two weeks, if you haven't been watching, I got a stacked team. I was able to just kind of sit back and... My own performance was not that bad. However... My own performance didn't matter. This week, it matters a great deal. I'm I'm potentially vulnerable. I could be on the block. I'm putting in practice. But all you can do with with an event like this, you know, you can you can raise your odds. But it still comes down to a little bit of variance. Take it from somebody who's in, you know, Champions of Fire. He was. I think we will use that. We don't need a spirit heart. I think we should probably try to get tarot cloth. This is what I mean by taking a second to think things over. We'll probably get force. <gasps> what the heck was that, dude? Well, we will... Okay, well, like I said. That's what I mean by taking a second to think things over. Let's move along, then. You know, in Champions of Fire... Champions of Fire 2, specifically. I practiced a lot. You don't even want to know... How many hours I put into uh, Despicable Me, Minion Rush, EA's Real Racing 3, uh, Beach Buggy Racing, um, Beat Fever, like uh, Dancing Lines. I probably put 20 to 30 hours of practice in before that event that people think was all just memes. It was not just memes. It was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. What happened? Well, I was the top seed coming out of qualification that earned me the right to play against Hafu who is legitimately one of the best gamers on planet earth so you know that's what I mean when I say things happen Hafu by the way in the in the finals lost to another one of the best gamers in planet earth 18 year old League of Legends Wunderkind Yasuo who is now probably 20 I should stop calling him 18 but you know I I did what I could do and then uh, there was no choke. It's just it's the way she goes. So that's the way I'm approaching Champions Assault too. You know, everybody else, even if they're not practicing, there's definitely a, you know, a chance just on, you know, previously learned video game skill they could win. 
Luckily, unlike Champions of Fire, at least Champions of Salt also has a social aspect. So, in theory, you could possibly save yourself. <laughs> Don't shoot this guy. Get this guy! We really need Death's List. Like, we, we've got a good setup and our deals with the devil have been awesome. But, uh... On any room, this room, I'm not going to beat myself up over it because it's a tough one to get it with, an, with a spawner. But um, any room where we can get uh, Death's List is very nice for us. No, no, no. Not yet. Anyway, hold on. That's just fortuitous. Because um, we could honestly really use Rate of Fire damage as a secondary concern. This room is not bad. That's not very useful. It is enough money to make the shop worthwhile, though, without a doubt. Could play it one more time, but hey, we don't need to play with fire that much. That was not a good time to use that. Um, so that was, uh, you know, I did a little bit of that on Saturday. Played a very small amount of Halo Reach. Prepared some stew in the Instant Pot, so I got good lunches this week. It's a pretty low-key Saturday. Watched some hockey. Cleaned up the house a little bit. It was very nice. It was nice to have a day off that was an actual day off. Kate took like a wine tasting class and she was like, you know, you could come if you want. And I was like, I... Honestly, it sounds like fun. But I think I'm kind of... For now, I'm kind of funned out. <laughs> I would like to... Uh, I would like to basically just sit at home and, and do very little. I, it is a tears upgrade. I don't think we can take it, though. I, I don't think it's a, it's a worthwhile take there. We did get a damage upgrade from Death's List, though. And then when she went, she was like, everybody else brought their boyfriend or husband. And I was like, ooh... That's one of those ones you should have said yes to. <laughs> but I was enjoying a little bit of me time. That's when I prepared my stew. Thank you very much. Okay, well that's why you should have picked up Bob's Rotten Head. But now on principle I refuse to pick it up again. Oh, this is- hold on. Hold on. What? I thought that was two item rooms. My mistake. It's not two item rooms. I thought we were on an XL floor. I got excited because I was like, oh, we can teleport out of boss rush. That could be a big get for us. Um, I don't think we need Nun's Habit. Fanny pack for seven cents is a good enough deal. We're really looking for a big swing there, though. And Black Candle is honestly pretty great. Come on. No! <laughs> we were so close to Death's List. You know, I'm I'm very much not a uh, let me let me put it this way. When I was a teenager, every day I just sat at home, and played video games, right? Um, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. At the time, I found it very boring. As an adult, if I even get like a day now and then to do that, usually by halfway through the day, I'm like, okay, this is enough. But still, hold on, I think we we definitely can make use of both of those um it's not my ideal way to spend my life now but either way you know if if when i was 16 if you were like hey do you want to just go sit outside and like i don't know do nothing i would be like oh my god finally someone has asked me to do the thing i've always wanted to do i'll do anything i'm very much in a different position now you know i i might as well do that. Um, I'm, I'm busy. You, d you can't say no to infamy. I don't mean that in the sense like, oh, I never get time for myself. I'm so busy because, you know, I think that's a bit of a cop out. But I just mean like... Now, I say no to doing things all the time. Because I'm already thinged out. I've been doing... I do my things. I, uh, Kate invites me to things, and they're not really invites, you know, for a lot of this stuff. It's your husbandly duty. It's like, hey, do you want to go to this thing that I got invited to? And you make the spousal guess. You go, because sometimes, 
your spouse will bring it up out of a sense of uh, duty in a way. They don't want to go. They want you to say, I'm not really feeling it. Sometimes it's, hey, we got invited to this thing. Do you want to go? And it's, we're going, but I just want you to say yes. You got to figure out which one's which. And that's, I mean, it's fair. I do the same thing. What do you think PAX East is? The, the times that we've gone. I'm just, uh, I rarely, and I, sometimes it comes up in chat, people think because I say no to a lot of social obligations, they find it rude. Um, it's not rude, it's just, I mean, I, it, I could see how you would perceive it as being rude, but honestly, I try to explain it to people that are a little bit on the younger side, especially. We, we gotta go to our item room. Um, you just sort of get full as you get older. I mean, may maybe you don't, depending on the way that you live your life, but, like, I'm full, dude. I don't always say no to, to social stuff, but I am at the same time, like, if you're like, hey, do you want to come out to fencing club and see if you like it? And I'm like, nah. I'm, it's, I might like it. I might like a lot of things. What I would like a lot right now is to have a three-hour window where I could make a cup of tea and just sit on the couch. And, like, absentmindedly, like, put something on TV and then look at my phone. Because I'm, I'm tapped out. <laughs> I need that, uh, I need that me time. I value it more now. Okay, this is a big potential moment. Very low odds... But maybe, if everything goes right, we can beat Mom within 10 seconds and get Boss Rush. It's a hard Mom to beat with an Orbital. It doesn't help. I was gonna say it's gonna be close, but it's not. We can still get a deal with the Devil, one way or the other. We weren't off by too much. Okay, no deal. We will leave. We knew we had to fight Krampus at some point, in all likelihood. I don't want Krampus's head, unless we can get a battery charge. Lump of coal, that's Krampus's head. We did get a stat, though. I don't know what it was. Okay, it's a surprisingly delicate situation here. Things could get a little spotty. Just keep it up. This is probably the most important floor to try to make Death's List work in some capacity. Every room just gives me one wrinkle. Like having to kill a non-champion after a champion. Wait, having to kill a non-champion... Yeah, having to kill a champion before a non-champion. That's what I'm trying to say. We don't control Rotten Baby either, so... You know, I'd see? I'm trying. <laughs> it's not that easy, dude. Where are you? You were to my right? You are to my right. Okay. Actually getting the virus would be pretty huge. I mean, all of our stats are pretty good if we could just get rate of fire. <laughs> okay, virus is nice. Didn't even affect our speed, so we must have, like, gone beyond capping out. Ah, please! I don't think it... Well, maybe it worked and we got the chest. Anyway, I'm just... I'm surprised how much we have to think about Isaac right now. Considering the amount of deals with the devil we've had, you'd think we'd be we'd be sitting pretty. I think we've taken like the maximum number of deals with the devil that you can take to sack a lot of HP and not really be that well off. <laughs> like we we got the maximum amount of good but not great items. Like, I, and I'm being a little insulting to some of the items, but, you know. I mean, you can look at our stats. You can look at the optics of the run right now and tell me. I don't think we're a lock. 
Six spirit hearts. Relatively average DPS. Admittedly, we got some nice kind of intangibles. Rotten babies helping out. You know, we got two orbitals. We got good de deal with the devil odds right here. We've got uh, Book of the Dead, if I can ever remember to use it. But do I even want to use it, or would I rather try to get a stat gain from an item? Maybe I shouldn't have taken Void in the first place. We could have just rolled Book of the Dead instead and probably been completely fine. You know, you got all sorts of all sorts of crises, real and imagined, tangible and spiritual, happening right now. It's a very non-groovy combination, baby. Hey! Okay, thank you at least for giving us the demon heart. Okay, this room, no chance. Forget Death's List. I do think the best way to think of Death's List is, you know, you're not babysitting it. If you can't make it work, you can't make it work. But there's some rooms where a little bit of elbow grease goes a long way. Okay, let's see how this goes. Conquest? Conquest does not create enemies except for this right here. As long as you don't kill one of these, you shouldn't be able to not get Death's List to work. Getting hit once is fine. Not optimal, but fine. No, 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 no. Okay, we did get a Demon Heart at least. Let's see what's going on in here. Okay, we have to take Mom's Knife, just to be straight up with you. We could take both. I will not. <laughs> that is uh, it's a foolhardy endeavor. I didn't really need to suck that up, I think, but still. Okay. It, it's still... I know that this is going to sound like cowardice. But I'm being sincere. I still don't think it's totally sorted. But honestly, getting two Spirit Hearts right out of the gates will help out a lot, even if I immediately squandered one. It also helps us out with, with Death's List. Okay, so we're like, we're reasonably safe right now for sure. That helps too. <laughs> Honestly, if anything, I know this is going to sound hilarious, but our, our rate of fire is maybe a little bit too high now. In terms of, like, we're charging our shots, they're going too far. Maybe that's range. That might be range in this game. I don't know. I'm not good with phases. But yeah, if you you might already understand. But if you don't understand it, I'm, I, I think you will, you know, at some point. Once you gotta... You know, when I was a teenager, like... To be honest... If we end up uh, having kids, this is going to influence my parental style in a big way. I had so much free time when I was a teenager. I, I think I would even go so far as to say I had too much free time. I was bored on the regular, which is, I'm sure, not uncommon as far as, uh, you know, being a, a, a teenager goes. Um, but I was, like, starved for... Trying to think of the right word here. I was like starved for any kind of stimulation, you know? Because I just didn't have anything to do. That's why I always say, like, you know, if we become a parent, our kid is 100% gonna do chores. I did almost no chores. I eventually made up for the dereliction of knowledge uh, when I went to college. You know, I, when I got there, I was like, I don't know how to use a washing machine. And everyone was like, here, I'll show you. And then I moved out on my own in my second year. Well, with roommates, but, you know, not in dorms. And I was like, I don't really know how to cook. And then I, like, looked it up on the internet, figured it out. I don't really know how to do dishes. Figured it out, you know. But, from no one other streamers, a lot of streamers didn't go through that step. They just went, I don't know how to do the dishes. And then people were like, Here's how you do it. And then they didn't do it very well on their first try. And they went, this is impossible. And never, ever tried it again. Um, my kid, oh man. From the age of like five onwards, I'm never doing another household chore. I got a vacuum. I'm knocking the mortgage out. The kid can vacuum. 
Hold on, this is an important one. All you gotta do is press a button and walk around, pretend you're a spaceship. I do a complex job here. It's the duties of my job are simple, but the overhead is absurd to get... A, it took me two decades of packing pop culture references into my brain to be able to do what I'm doing right now. That's a... That's a job that's hard to replace, okay? Well, hard to replace <laughs> properly. Um, help. Help me. We almost got Death's List to work there. That's crazy. I don't want to inundate, you know, a child so that they can't have fun. But if they are never doing anything and they're bored. The boredom can be alleviated very simply. Here are uh, my credit card receipts from January to December. You could please highlight uh, ones that, uh, you know, could be perceived as business related so that I can look at them myself. Be very helpful, thank you. I'm half joking, but I'm like, I'm not fully joking. I think a little bit of, you know, I mean, here's the thing I don't know anything about being a parent, right? All I know is how to be a child and how I turned out. And I think I did turn out pretty well. And I owe that, um,. No, like, people, they, they focus so much on, like, ah, the strength of character that kids have. Like, did you make your kids work? Did you give your kids an allowance? Blah, blah, blah. But really, like, I got off super easy in that department. I did, like, no chores at all, basically. My parents basically had the philosophy of, like, as long as you're getting A's, you can do whatever you... I mean, not, like, from a disciplinary standpoint, you can do whatever you want. But, like, you, you don't have to participate much in housework and yard work and stuff like that as long as you're doing well in school. So they had opened up a lot of space for me to do well, and I was lucky to have that privilege for sure. However, it uh, might have led to me having a dereliction in household knowledge, but there's other spectrums you got to consider when it comes to raising a kid. My mom raised me, you know, in a very gentle way. That made me very sensitive, which I think is a good thing. I know you're going to be like, oh, he's not sensitive at all. I am. I'm just like not to... The stories in video games that a lot of people like. People assume that that means I'm uh, emotionless. It's not true. Things strike me on a daily basis. I, I get struck by the beauty of things. Not a plastic bag floating in the wind like Wes Bentley from the film American Beauty. Man, I don't want any of this garbage. This might be... It is bookworm. But I don't even want to suck up clicker. It could ruin us by giving us the keeper. But I'm like, dude, when I'm a parent, my kid's going to do chores. I think you always have a certain temptation to, like, you know, want to raise your kid in the opposite way that your parents raised you, even if you thought you were raised pretty well. I don't know if that's true, but that's the hunch I get sometimes. Like, my parents were in, um, they were raised in relatively, you know, not well off families. My parents were not, you know, they're, they're doing very well for themselves. Now, when I was young, they, you know, were not of the same means, but they were definitely like, you know, you know, when I was 13, I had to work at my dad's drywall company. I vowed I would never let my son, you know, do, be in the same position. And I'm like, dude, when I was 13, I didn't do anything. My kid's going to be hanging drywall. Don't give him a mask. I'm not a monster. <laughs> and I'll, I'll teach him how via the internet. It's like the the Fight Club World War II thing, right? I don't uh, idolize the characters in Fight Club, just to be clear. But it is an interesting thing to think about when, uh, you know, uh, Tyler Durden is like, you know... We didn't have a, a grand cause to rally behind, so so we never learned how to be men. It's like, you know, the, the guys who are over there fighting are like, geez, I'm going to do this so my kids never have to. And then their kids are like, you know, where's my great war? <laughs> where's my sense of purpose through patriotism, you know? My parents were like, oh, I had to work so hard as a kid I didn't get to enjoy my childhood. And then... Uh, 
I'm like, I enjoyed my childhood too much. It set me up poorly for adulthood. You always... No, it's not even like grass is greener on the other side. It's just like, you know... You always notice your own gaps, I suppose. I do think kids have it too easy, though. <laughs> sort of. Not. I, I want to be clear. People, they, everyone, they, they look for reasons to get angry sometimes. I'm not saying, like, oh, this political correctness has gone mad. I'm just saying, you know, whenever you make a statement like that, like an ignorant blanket statement that you shouldn't have made in the first place, um, people are always like, oh, yeah, what about a kid who has it bad? And you're like, well, obviously people who have it bad have it bad. I'm just saying, my upbringing, I had it too easy, and so did most of my classmates. And we knew it. Especially, like, scholastically. I get that, like, in school. I'm opening it, I don't care, dude. In school, um, I'm not trying to say that the pace of class should be dictated entirely by the students who grasp it the fastest. I think, you know, especially in a publicly funded school, that's, uh, really, it, it probably borders, if not crosses into a dereliction of duty. You know, educational experience should be made whenever possible to benefit all children. However, I will say, if you were good at multiplication, third grade, you didn't really get a whole lot done. Teacher's like, what's six times three? You're like, 18. Okay, what's 10 times four? 40. What's 8 times 6? 48. Alright, just sit and think quietly until all the other classmates have answered the questions. Do this word search. Anyway, thanks for watching. <laughs> That's when they should be hanging drywall. If you enjoyed the episode, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I will see you next time. See ya!